Big news, Samsung's One UI 8 is moving faster than expected, and it's already showing up in ways nobody saw coming. The Galaxy S21 Fan Edition, a phone that launched years ago with Android 12, is now flexing its muscles again on Geekbench running Android 16 with One UI 8. And here's the kicker, it's not just surviving, it's actually performing better than before. The numbers tell the story 1540 in single, core and 3895 in multi, core, both higher than its results on One UI 7. That's pretty wild for a phone that some thought would be left behind by now. Welcome back viewers, Sam here. If you're into these updates, make sure to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss what's next, because trust me, the best part is still coming. Now, what makes this so interesting is that the S21 FE has always been considered that fan favorite, budget flagship, a sort of underdog in Samsung's lineup. And yet, here we are in 2025, watching it get a performance boost from software alone. This is a clear sign that Samsung's four-year OS update promise isn't just words, it's playing out in real time. That promise means devices from 2021 are still getting treated like VIPs in 2025, which honestly is something Apple has always been praised for. But seeing Samsung do it consistently is a game changer for Android. And this isn't happening in isolation. While the S21 FE is flexing in benchmarks, Samsung's most powerful flagships are getting even more attention. The Galaxy S24 series is already part of the One UI 8 beta program, and now reports hint that the second beta build is right around the corner. A new test version S928BX4ZYH9 was spotted in Samsung's testing servers. If you've followed Samsung updates before, you know what that means the public beta is practically ready to drop. That means new features, smoother animations, and possibly even some hidden AI tricks waiting to be uncovered. But let's pause for a second. Why does the beta matter so much? It's not just about bragging rights or trying new wallpapers. Beta updates are like open rehearsals before the big show. Regular users get to try features early, hunt down bugs, and push feedback straight to Samsung. It's like being part of the engineering team without the engineering degree. Mm. And when thousands of people test a beta, the official stable release that follows is usually much more polished. The rollout itself is another story. Samsung has a history of starting slow with regions like Korea, the US, the UK, and India getting the updates first. Then it spreads to other countries in waves. So if you don't see the update banner yet in your Samsung members app, don't panic. It doesn't mean you're left out. It just means the spotlight hasn't reached your region yet. Patience pays off here. And sometimes waiting even means you get a more stable version while others are reporting bugs. And here's where things get even more exciting. The beta isn't staying limited to just the latest flagships. Samsung is expanding it to a wider lineup. We're talking Galaxy Z Fold 6, Z Flip 6, the S23 series, and even mid-rangers like the A54, A36, and A35. That's a huge range of devices, but the real surprise, the budget-friendly Galaxy A26. This phone wasn't even on Samsung's official roadmap, yet Geekbench listings show it's already being tested internally with Android 16 and One UI 8. It pulled in 1015 point single core and 2824 multi core. Sure, it's early, so those numbers aren't final, but the fact it's in testing this soon is a clear hint. Samsung is quietly reshaping how it treats its affordable phones, and that could mean a whole new level of support for budget buyers. Think about that for a moment. Budget models like the A26 running the same next gen software as a Galaxy Ultra. That's the kind of shift that can keep users loyal because they know they won't be forgotten after a year. And if Samsung really keeps this pace, we might see a future where the entire Galaxy ecosystem, from foldables to fan editions to budget phones, are running the latest software almost side by side. That's a serious power play in the Android world. Now the natural question is, what exactly does One UI 8 bring to the table? Beyond the benchmarks, this update is expected to pack tighter AI integration, smarter widgets, more fluid animations, and new ways to customize lock screens and modes. Samsung has been teasing improvements in efficiency, which explains the performance bump we're already seeing on the S21 FE. But there are also whispers about better multitasking for foldables and even some experimental AI-powered tools that could roll out during the beta phase. And since this is Samsung, don't be surprised if they hold back one or two big features to reveal alongside the Galaxy S26 series. What's fascinating here is the timing. Just last year, Samsung was criticized for rolling out updates slower than competitors. But this year, it was the very first to launch an Android 16 beta with a custom skin. That shows they're learning, adapting, and speeding up. 
If you're the type who hates waiting months for updates, this is the best news you could hope for. So here's the bottom line of three, year old phone is showing renewed strength, the latest flagships are gearing up for their next beta, and even entry level models are sneaking into the software spotlight earlier than planned. That's not just an update cycle, it's a strategy shift. Samsung is pushing to prove that no matter which Galaxy phone you own, you're part of the future. The question is, will other Android brands match this level of support, or will Samsung end up setting the standard all over again? That's something worth watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Does this change the way you see Samsung updates? And do you think your phone should be part of this One UI 8 wave? Drop your thoughts below, and I'll catch you in the next one.